This is the big leaf maple. Easy to identify, it has a huge leaf. If you don't have the leaf, you have this stem, got a huge bud, and the, the forks look like uh, an uh, a umbrella that got blown in the wind. Number two is uh, Oregon, Oregon ash. It is, uh, the Oregon ash is um, a pinnate compound. Has uh, five pairs and a terminal leaf. And then if you don't have the leaves, it has these, these, uh, these are called helicopters because they go like down like a helicopter. Number three is, number three is uh, wild rose. Wild rose is easy because the thorn looks like a shark fin. If, it's a, if the thorn is shaped like a needle, then it's a uh, current, but this is a shark fin, therefore it's a rose. Number four, uh, this is thimbleberry. Thimbleberry is the only plant on the list that has tertiary veins in the leaf. Okay, so there's a primary vein, a secondary vein, and then a tertiary vein. That's thimbleberry. Number five is uh, wa uh, black walnut. If these are present, you know it's black walnut. No leaves, but the, the uh, stems are always really heavy, dark colored. The leaf is bipinnate compound and has nine pairs in a terminal. This is white fir. We have two uh, variations of white fir. This has flat splays. This is a lower elevation. This has where the needles are pointed upward. This is a high elevation white fir. If it was a red fir, the needles would be shorter. So if you said red fir on this, that's wrong because red fir would have shorter needles. Number seven is the ponderosa pine. If you take this, you have an, an orange uh, uh, bud right here that looks like a missile. The needles are in threes, three needles to a bundle, and they're, the needles are thick, and they're also raspy if you feel them between your fingers. Number eight is silvery foliage. We have flowers coming on. This is a bush lupin. This is bent leaf bay laurel. So there's, if you're the last person to go by, go through here, there's always a bent leaf. Why is that? You bend the leaf, and it smells good. <laughs> bent leaf bay laurel. This is, uh, number 10 is sequoia. Sequoia has dragon scales. If you look at these scales very closely, it looks like a dragon. Number 11, this is a two needle pine. The needles are fairly long and they're, they're less thick. That makes it a bishop pine. If it was two needles and the needles were shorter and thicker, it would be a lodgepole. This is a bishop. This has angry leaves. It's angry Oregon grape. So that's easy to remember, angry Oregon. It's also getting ready to bloom. These are gonna be yellow flowers, Oregon grape. Next is a live oak. On the live oaks, the live oaks may or may not have a pointed leaf edge. It's really important that you turn them over. So on this side, it's green, and on this side, it's silver. This is Canyon Live Oak. You're probably too close. Canyon Live Oak. Number 14, this is a, an alder. Um, let's see. Right here, these little cones are a dead giveaway. There's two kinds of alders. There's a white alder and a red alder. The red alder, the leaves are really bad. It's like a 50-50 chance. These leaves are brand new, but if you open one up, it has, uh, it has a fine, fine, uh, finely toothed leaf edge. Red alder is a coarse toothed leaf edge, and the leaf edges curl over on red alder. This doesn't do that. Finely toothed leaf edge, finely like the snow white alder, right? Okay, white alder. 14, number 15. Number 47, this is current. Current has a three-lobed leaf. The leaves have three lobes, current. Sometimes it has, um, sometimes it has a thorn, but the thorns are needle-shaped. Number 42 is mahogany. Mahogany has a uh, leaf that is shaped like a clamshell. That's 42. 43, this is flannel bush. Flannel bush usually has fuzzy components. The leaves are usually fuzzy. The stem is usually fuzzy. These leaves are pretty new, but they're fuzzy. It also has three lobes. It's also a perennial, that's flannel. Number 44 has these big old long caterpillars. Uh, the leaf is co uh, coarsely toothed. It is a paper birch. Number 45, no number, uh, anyway, number, 
I'm not sure what number this is. 45. 45. 45. This is uh, elderberry. Elderberry, if you break the stem off, you can squish it with your fingers because there's pith inside. The valley elderberry beetle likes to live inside. And you can see I'm squishing that stem. That's an elderberry. Also, elderberry will wilt. See how it's wilted? It wilts very quickly. Number 46. This is one of the cedars. Question is, which cedar is it? Uh, so what I would look for is these cones at the end. These cones are round and circular. Round and circular, that would be Port Orford. Also, if you look closely at the, at the scales, Port Orford is going to have X's on it from the, from the uh, stomata. Okay, this is, uh, this is stinks like cat, poop, or cat pee. And it has these little berries. These little berries, they look yummy, but they're not. They're very sticky. This is California juniper. That? that is number 50. Okay, number 49 has little leaves, and if you touch them, they're sticky. It's sticky monkey flower. This is a three needle thing. It has gray bark. The needles are grayish green, dull colored. It is gray pine. Gray pine 48? Number, number 15, uh, this is a tan oak, and Gormley, how do, how do you remember a tan oak? That's a bodybuilder. Bodybuilder, oh, it's a bodybuilder. What? It, the, okay, so if you look at the, the secondary veins, the secondary veins look like six pack abs, like a bodybuilder. Bodybuilders are tan, it's tan oak. Uh, this is one of the ferns, there's two ferns. There is a giant chain fern, and there is a uh, bracken fern. These are not brackens, therefore it's a giant chain fern. On these live oaks, always turn them over like this. So this one is green, it's green on both sides. But if you look at the leaf, the leaf edges are curled. It goes like this, it looks like it will float. So it looks like it will float on the coast. So it's coastal live oak. This thing is all wrinkled. It's an indicator of, there's two things that will wrinkle like this on the plant list. There's elderberry and there's buckeye. Buckeye is going to have, when you look at the leaf, it's going to have, it's going to have five leaflets, and they radiate from a central point. It's palmate compound. It wilts like this very easily. Also, if the leaves were not here, like about a week ago, the leaves wouldn't be here. The, the uh, stem is very knuckly and very jointed and usually a light color. That's buckeye. Hopefully, everybody knows a willow. Willow has a smooth stem has these catkins right here a lot of times early in the year. Um, the leaves are typically long and slender. That's a willow. Number 20, okay, we have a blue oak, and this one's actually, we have two oaks here. They look identical, but lucky you, there are some, some of last year's leaves right here. This is a uh, blue oak. Blue oak leaves are slightly lobed, so this is a blue oak. Number 21. If you look closely at the leaves on here, the leaves are deeply lobed. These are new leaves. They just came out a week or two ago. Leaves are deeply lobed, and um, so that means it's deeply val deep valleys, deeply lobed, Quercus lobata, lobes, lobata, valleys, valley oak. 22 is one of the cedars. It has flat scales. There are no X's in the stomata. The uh, scales are segmented, therefore it is Incense cedar. Looks like a Chinese finger trap. A what? Chinese finger trap, it does. This is, we has the really cool blossoms. This is red bud. No leaves yet. The leaves are round on red bud. Okay, this one. Yeah. This one, if you gotta look at both sides, it's always important that you if you can pick up both sides, pick up the sample, look at both sides. This one, when I look at it, you would think it's redwood but it's not, something's wrong. Oh, it's kind of green on the bottom. You would think it's redwood, but it's not, it's yew wood. Yew wood is green on the bottom. Redwood is silver on the bottom. This one right here has kind of a reddish stem. The leaves look like olive, uh, olive leaves, like an olive tree. They also, the secondary veins look like parking lots. The leaves are really soft. This is ramness or coffee berry. This guy right here, we have two different samples here for you. This is the tree that came from healthy soils with sunlight. This is the same uh, tree 
uh, poor sunlight with poor soils, but they both have the same characteristics. They have two, if you take your finger like this, what you find is long needles and short needles. So what do you call that, Mr. Corp? You have a name for that. Uh, two, rank. Two, two rank. Two rank, thanks. Yeah, two rank. So the, long, the outside ones are long, and then there are short ones. That is a grand fir. Number 27. Got some new leaves here. Uh, this is cottonwood. Characteristic of cottonwood is that the leaf edge is bumpy. It's not pointed, it's bumpy. That's called serrate. That is a Fremont cottonwood. This guy right here, always kind of fuzzy. Uh, we gave you some, the uh, fruit on this guy today. These are sycamore balls. Sycamore leaves look like a dinosaur foot a lot of times. If you look at that, it looks kind of like a dinosaur foot. That is California sycamore. This is, this is a wrinkly thing. It's like, uh, reminds you of Santa, old man Santa. Uh, therefore, it's Yerba Santa. 29. Number 30. Number 30 is chemise. Chemise has little tiny baby leaves. They are absolutely tiny. Chemise. 31. We call this toothy toyon. There are no berries on it. The berries would be bright red, but the leaf edge is toothy. It's toothed, and the teeth are very uniform. Toothy toyon. 32. Uh, this is another one of those things where it has short needles. You're trying to figure out what it is. If you look at these joints right here where my finger is, a weird thing that this does is that the, ne the needles crisscross. Um, and that's how I always try to identify it. So it has this crisscross feature at the joints. Um, it looks like it's having a bad hair day. Okay? This is Mount uh, Western Hemlock. Number 33. This is Douglas fir. Douglas fir has soft needles. And to make it really easy, we gave you the cone, and the cone has these really interesting scales, and the scales look like dog tails. If you look at it closely, it looks like a dog running away from you. That's 33. Oh, man. If you ever, coaches, if you ever have a student that gets this one wrong, just poke him with it, and your student will never forget what it is ever again. Because this is, this is nutmeg. The needles are very, very sharp. And I mean, they are really sharp. They will draw blood. So if you have a student that gets that wrong, just tap him with it a few times. That Your student will never get it wrong again. All right. This is number 38. We thought this was a cool sample. This is one of the five needle pines. The needles are very, very long. That makes it a tory pine. Five needle, very long needles. 39 is one of the live oaks. Always turn them over. Green on both sides, but the leaves aren't cupped. Can't be coastal live oak. The, uh, if it was frosty on one side, it would be canyon live oak, but this is green on both sides, different colored green, therefore it's interior live oak. This guy is really easy, has orange bark, the leaves are big. This is a Pacific Madrone. This is Manzanita, raise your hand if you got this wrong. If you got this wrong, you better get with the program because this is the easiest plant. In California, it's the most common shrub in the entire state. This is manzanita. People try to get rid of this stuff. And by the way, thanks for not raising your hand because if you got it wrong, you would never admit to there's that. There's two different kinds. Of, there's two oh, different yeah, that's different. a good point. Thanks for that. This is a coastal variety, right? You got it on the coast? That's a coastal variety manzanita. And um, the coastal variety is a little bit different than uh, this is probably, uh, I would say, Plumas County, east side of the Sacramento Valley. This is actually white leaf manzanita. White leaf manzanita at night in the headlights looks like silver, mm -hmm. but it's really white. Um, this one, uh, coastal variety, the leaves are different, but it's the identifying feature here is they all have red bark. Um, the most common variety is actually green leaf manzanita, where the leaves are looks like this, but they're green. Number 35, this looks like juniper, looks like California juniper but it smells good, no, it doesn't have a cat pee smell, and it has a cone right there. The cones look like um, soccer balls or volleyballs. Number 36. Oh, it is. <laughs> Sorry, Monterey, Monterey Cypress. <laughs> Number 36, uh, this, is a, this sample has very rigid stems, and uh, there are no sharp points, but it's really rough. Rigid stems, little bitty leaves, and it's starting to bloom. Uh, that is a... Um, Buckbrush. Buck brush. 
Number 37 is a five needle pine. There are two pines like this that are five needle and they're very similar. One of them is sugar pine, the other one is western white pine. It's very difficult to tell them apart without a cone. But I will tell you that western white pine is at high elevation, like, like 6,000 feet and above. So if you don't know what it is and if there's no cone, it's probably gonna be sugar pine because we don't get up into the mountains at 6,000 feet very often. So it's probably gonna be sugar pine. Okay. This pine right here is pretty interesting because yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, Corp suggested that we talk about this. This pine is really hard to identify without a cone. So, and 90% and of the time, or is it, when we see this pine at a contest, we only see the cone. Well, this time we don't have a cone, but we have the sample. We decided not to put it out today because it's kind of hard to identify. There's no cone with it, um, but if there was a cone, okay, this is a culture pine. So interesting thing about the culture pine, how would you identify it? It's a three needle thing, and it has really long thick needles, just like a gray pine. The needles are dull colored like a gray pine. They're about the same length as a gray pine. It kind of looks like a gray pine, but it's not. Gray pine would have gray bark. This one doesn't have gray bark. I'm just gonna look at this too. So one thing, <clears throat> one thing that you can look at too is the fascicle itself. And the fascicle itself on a coulter is going to be much uh, darker uh, than it is on a gray pine. So if you go look on the gray pine, it should be kind of almost translucent, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, longer too, aren't they longer on the but gray pine? But they should, they should follow further down on the needle itself where this one doesn't. So that's one way you might be able to try and identify it. Okay, any questions about any of the plant samples? Um, Remember that when you're identifying plants, you walk into a room like this and the first thing you do is panic because there's so many of them and there's so many conifers and you freak out. So just take a deep breath when you come in and remember what you learned when you, in, when you were practicing. Every single plant has an identifying feature and that's the best way to learn them. You can also have a saying about them, you know, like toothy toy on everything like that. Yeah, question. Um, how do you tell the difference? Excellent question. I think we have a we have a we have a black cottonwood right here. Right here is a black cottonwood. So a black cottonwood. If you if you turn if you take a Fremont cottonwood leaf and you turn it upside down, it's a heart shape. When you turn one of these guys upside down, it looks like a water drop or a teardrop. It's it has a pointed. Uh, it's called a pointed apex. The tip of the leaf is pointed, whereas and the leaf edge is more smooth. There might it's a. Is it always smooth, Mr. Corp, on the, on the uh, black cottonwood? Leaf edge always smooth? Yeah, generally smooth. Whereas the Fremont cottonwood is serrate on the leaf edge. Actually, carnate. You all threw shit. Isn't it serrate? No. Okay. Points. Carnates. All right.